Hello everybody. Welcome to chapter 13 of White Silk Lovers. Wednesday, April 7th, 9.50 a.m. Kobe. After we arrived at campus and found a place to park, I led Tomas and Sam to the music building, an older three-story building. I think it used to be the business department 20 years ago. It had large windows and a bike rack filled with a dozen bikes. A few students lounged on the steps, and a couple more talked to their phones. We had ten minutes before class started. Tomas and Sam had to leave for the airport soon, so we didn't have much time. For this to work, we needed Dr. Garnier. She wasn't in the room as we entered. No one was. Just the big old upright piano that needed tuning. You've got your new song, right? I said. Let's hear it. No, Tomas said, and pushed me to the piano. You want me to play it, I said. After all the work we did last night, I want to hear yours. Tomas slid the backpack off my back and opened it. You really want to hear mine? A small part of me was kind of flattered. Another part was terrified. As much as I had learned in college, no matter how much I practiced, Tomas was better. You want me to dump the whole bag out, Tomas said. I'll get it. It only took a moment to find the rough copy I had made. Key of G, a fast beat, but not like a dance beat. Even though the piano was so out of tune, it was heaven singing the song Tomas had helped me with. To my joy, Tomas joined in. That is, until it got to the third verse, stumbled over the words, and both of us broke up laughing. We'll work on that part tonight, he said. Something large thumped on the table behind us. Another new song, Mr. Wood? Call me Kobe, I blurted out, then clapped my hand to my mouth. Sorry, Dr. Garnier, I didn't mean to talk back. That's okay, Kobe. Who's your friends? Let me present Tomas, Sterling Locke's backup singer, and Sam, Sterling Locke's drummer. Dr. Garnier set her laptop bag on the table next to the guitar case. So this is the singer and songwriter you were telling the class about last week. And Sterling's drummer. Kobe, you keep some very interesting company. You don't know how interesting, Sam said. Tomas elbowed his brother in the ribs. It's an honor, ma'am. A couple of students trickled into the classroom. We didn't have much time until class started. Dr. Garnier, I was wondering if I could ask a favor. It's rather important. If it has to do with late work or missing a test, you know my policy. No, ma'am, it doesn't have anything to do with those. I took a breath and dove in with my wild idea. Tomas and Sam came back here because somebody leaked secrets, and for a little while they suspected me. Tomas came up to me and took my hand. And we know it wasn't you, so don't get all paranoid again. What does that have to do with me? Dr. Garnier said, sitting on the corner of the desk. Not so much you, as your program. The one you send our assignments through to see if we are plagiarizing or downloading the assignment from some website? Go on. Sam scoffed. Kobe has this dumb idea that if we ran the article through your software, we might find something. A clue, Dr. Garnier said, a slight smile barely crinkling her lips. She opened up her laptop bag. How very Scooby-Doo of you. This is the article. Thomas opened up his laptop and displayed the page of the 234. Dr. Garnier scanned the article. You'll need to email it to me, Microsoft Word format, but you'll have to do something for me as well. A few more students wandered in. A couple opened up their laptops. What's that? Thomas asked. Thomas, Dr. Garnier said, I'd like to hear one of your songs. Not Sterling Locks, but yours. Mine? Why? Kobe told us that you were a talented songwriter, even better than Locke. What have you got? Dr. Garnier said, opening up her guitar case and pulled out a worn but well cared for darkwood guitar. I could do Whisper. Kobe, did you know I wrote that one? And Sterling recorded it on his second album. The class was here, and everybody was watching us. I've copied and pasted the file. Where do I send it? Sam said. Turning the laptop to face her, Dr. Garnier typed in an address. What about your new song, I said. You know, the one you sang at Diggory's. 
I have a copy on the laptop with all the changes we made. Sam? As Sam pulled it out, Dr. Garn here opened up her laptop. Class, we have a different lesson today. Allow me to present Kobe's boyfriend, Tomas, one of Sterling Locke's backup singers, and Sterling Locke's drummer, Sam. They came to me with a theft problem. And I know it isn't our usual topic of discussion, but let me show you how fast anyone can detect such issues. Email received, and I'm scanning. While we are waiting, Tomas, get started. Knew when it is. Tomas took a seat at the piano. This is when Kobe's been helping me with. While Tomas played, we both sang, and Dr. Garnier joined in with her guitar, and we had an impromptu concert. Tomas had altered the tempo, slowing it down, and it allowed him to showcase one of his famous riffs. He'll have to show me how he does that sometime. We finished with a flourish on both piano and guitar, laughing. Dr. Garnier can laugh. I never would have believed it. The class clapped, and for the next few minutes, Tomas and Sam answered all kinds of questions, like auditions, what it's like to play or sing in front of so many people, or all their travels. Sam got a chance to shine with that. While they spoke, Dr. Garnier looked over her laptop, and she typed a couple of things. Her eyes weren't crinkling with laughter. Kobe, Tomas, Sam, come look at this. All three of us went over and looked at the screen. The program had found seven major instances of similar usage involving Sterling Locke, and dozens of minor ones. Sam paled and said, I don't think even Jerry thought there would be this many. That's more than one a month since Sterling began singing, Tomas said. Can you send this to me? Already done, Dr. Garnier said, laying her guitar back in its case. I wish the news was better. Les will go ballistic. Tomas checked his laptop. I've got your email. Thank you for this. You don't know how much this means to Sterling. Maybe I do. Back in the day, I was lead guitarist for a band called Punk Pink. We had our share of troubles, too. You need anything else checked, send it my way, Dr. Garnier said. Kobe, walk your boyfriend out while we get started. As I walked Tomas and Sam back to their car, Tomas took my hand and let Sam get further ahead of us. I'm sorry about yesterday. Seeing the article sent me into a tailspin. It really bothers me that somebody's betraying me and we can't find out who. I am so sorry about yesterday. You didn't need to get caught in my problems. I'm not sorry, I said, curling my fingers around his. Well, I am about somebody leaking secrets, but not about last night. I'm glad you came back. Tomas stopped, stepped back, and turned to look at me. He grew serious. Are we okay? I really didn't mean to freak you out. I know, I said. We'll talk about it tonight. You've got a plane to catch. Tonight will be later. I have a show, Tomas said. Send me what Dr. Garnier sent you, and I'll take a look at it as well. I leaned in close and whispered. I think we're in trouble. Dr. Garnier called his boyfriends. Tomas raised an eyebrow, and his slight smile chased his seriousness away. He whispered into my ear. Then I guess we'd better start practicing. Another kiss. And a longer one. Tomas, would you get your butt down here? Sam yelled. I'll call you later, Tomas said, letting go of my hand and running to the car. I floated for the rest of the day. Wednesday, April 14th, 10 a.m. Tomas. It worked. Sterling is officially dating some nameless model. Les spun his laptop around and showed us the article. Jerry said, The same website? Entertainment Wasteland? The same. We don't know who it is, but somehow they hear things. That would be the ninth confirmed leak so far this tour. I slid my chair back and walked to the window. Great view of the train tracks. Did I tell you that Kobe thinks he's found my shirt? It's on this website called Auction Emporium. What's it going for? Les asked. Two grand in climbing. Do we have a list of the other missing items? I said. Jerry shuffled through some papers and pulled one to the top. A wig? A couple of two, three, four tattoos, some music, Javier's custom guitar picks, a microphone cover, a couple pair of sunglasses, little things. I prepared a cover story about how Sterling is thinking of marketing fake tattoos, Halloween costumes, 
that kind of stuff. Hopefully we won't need it. At least we know Kobe's not involved, Les said. He hasn't been around for most of this. How is he these days? Just thinking about Kobe made this whole double life bearable. I'm happier. The tours are becoming fun again. We haven't missed a night calling each other since we started nearly two weeks ago. Sometimes it's later, sometimes it's earlier, but it always happens. The emptiness that used to fill me has left since I met Kobe. Because I look forward to talking to him, I somehow make it through the rehearsals, the endless business of the day, getting songs ready for the new album, all the time with the trainer and makeup, and now the leaks and thefts. Life isn't fun, but because of Kobe, I can enjoy it again. The nightly talks have become my lifeline. Earth to Tomas. Anybody home? Les smiled. I asked how Kobe is doing. He's getting ready for the recital. He's thinking about debuting the piece we've been working on. At that point, I realized I'm smiling. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to his recital. Give me the date, and I'll see what I can work out, Les said. While I grabbed my notepad from my dressing room, I checked messages to see if Kobe had sent anything. Nothing. He's at work now, I think. Heading outside, I found a quiet bench where I can look at the empty parking lot and work on my songs. My producers have already found potential songs for my next album. The problem is that they all sound the same to me. It's my last year. Maybe it's time to do like Kelly said and see how far I can go. With wardrobe, I can do whatever I want. Different wigs for each concert, sometimes multiple looks. What I haven't told them is that I'm working up to having no wigs, no contacts, no tattoos, no pierced anything. Just me. That scared me. Tapping my foot to the rhythm that kept my agent happy, I let the words flow. I'll deal with pattern and fit later. Of course, it's a song about a man trapped by life. Not a dance song, but more of a ballad. Maybe Kobe can help me with it later. No. I'm frustrated with it. I'm frustrated with everything, except for what Kobe likes. I scrapped what I had worked on and patterned the next song idea after White Silk Lovers and let the melody flow in my mind. Mm. Working title, Veils of Love. In a key of D minor, 4-4 four, four time, intense, non-stop. The kind of song Kobe would dance to. No words yet, but a fast dance song. No, not a dance. As I set the pencil down, I stared at the notes, hearing the song in my head. It should start with a slower beat, and with each chorus or verse or interlude, it would become faster and faster, until it reached its climax. That didn't feel right. This was not a dance song, but it was for Kobe. It had happened. My feelings for Kobe had grown from a friend to something more. With what I was feeling, the words to the song needed something far more intimate. New working title. Lust? No, that didn't fit. Desire? No. What about Kobe? A simple title, but direct. Then the words for the song flowed as the words had never done before. In half an hour, I had three verses, a chorus, an ending refrain where I repeated the first verse, and a melody line. Once I locked myself in my dressing room, I got out my keyboard and put the melody together. For inspiration, I placed my phone before me with a picture of Kobe and me at Diggory's. I had been so happy that night. The tempo was off. It didn't match what I wanted to say. So I slowed it down, and down, until it became very intimate, very personal. A slow dance between lovers whispering to each other. Lovers. I paused and took a very deep breath. This song was that personal. One I would never record, and it would have an audience of only one person. With some blank sheet music pages, I jotted down what was on my laptop and labeled it Kobe. Only two people in the world would ever see this song, Kobe and me. It explained how I felt and what he meant to me. No one else would even know it existed. Besides, I wouldn't let anybody see a song in such a rough state. It needed a lot of polish. This song 
would take a lot of courage to sing because the final line of the song, Kobe, I love you. <laughs>